Are you looking at stuff after you finish welding it and it looks something like this? Everything looked great while you were welding it. But why the heck does it look like this after you finish? Let's go over some important stuff here right now to get things looking shiny and exactly the way we want them to. Now, when we see things that look like this, a lot of people's natural reaction is gonna just say, oh, it was too hot. It's way too hot. It's obviously overheated, etc." You get the idea. While this is absolutely correct in a sense, let's ask ourselves a different question here. And that question is gonna be, why did this happen? There's a lot of different things that can happen to cause a result like this, besides simply saying it's obviously too hot. And this is something I help a lot of people with when they reach some of the more difficult joints in my online TIG welding program. I see this all the time. Let's take a look. What we're looking at here is a butt joint. It is done with 1 8th of an inch or 3.2 millimeter material. So with this type of material, obviously a little bit touchy with overheating. Now you can dial in the amperage on your machine as best as you can, but even with the most perfect settings, overheating and burning through can still happen very easily. Probably the most important thing that you can remember to prevent things from burning through or overheating is adequate filler material. Let's take a look at these two examples here. Here we can see two butt joints. They are done on both the exact same plate or material thickness, and both of them were done with the exact same settings. The only difference between the two is the amount of filler material that was used for each of them. As you can see with one, we are using 332 or 2.4 millimeter filler material. With the other one, we're using 1 8th of an inch or 3.2 millimeter filler material. So even though we may have taken the time on our machine to get our settings absolutely dialed, to theoretically what we should want exactly for this weld. Between these two, we get completely different results. Now this is one thing I teach to my students all the time. We are focusing on getting the best heat control we can, and we don't always necessarily do it with the settings on our machine. We go through a series of exercises to show somebody how important filler material is and how it can save things from overheating. Now, I've done an episode before specifically on why I like using only 3.2 millimeter or 1 8th of an inch filler material. That episode is in the description below. I go into it way more in detail on that one. Check it out. But a lot of the time when we're welding, we can get ourselves into hot water really easily, especially in a circumstance like this where we're traveling towards the end of a joint. All of our heat is being pushed towards the end of the joint where the material is terminating. And this is typically always where we see overheating. Now, we can absolutely back off the heat if we are able to. I use a foot pedal I always prefer to because it allows me to do something like this a lot easier. But some people don't have access to that type of setup. So instead of focusing on backing off of our heat as we approach the end of the joint, what I like doing is intentionally making sure that I have enough weld reinforcement to make sure that my weld does not fall flat or hollow. As we are traveling towards the end of a joint or an area that's getting excessively hot and we are giving it insufficient filler material, it is very quickly gonna to begin to follow hollow and flat. So watching this pass, we can look at the reinforcement as I put the filler material into the weld puddle. You can see as I dab each time, we don't see the reinforcement height rise at all. As a matter of fact, with inadequate filler material, as our heat begins to get away from us, we can actually see it sinking. So instead of adding reinforcement, we are seeing it become concave and hollow. As we look at it after the fact here, we can see that the pass has almost no reinforcement to it. The entire thing is overheated completely, especially towards the end, things get really out of hand. Okay, looking at a different pass here with the exact same materials and machine setting, we can see that with more filler material added to each step, we can actually watch the reinforcement height rise each time I dab the filler material into the weld pool. So as opposed to the previous one, where we see things falling flat or concave, we can actually see the reinforcement height increase on this one. Looking at this one after the fact, we can see that we have much better reinforcement overall, and the amount of heat that was able to properly blend the filler material into the base material, we get a much better profile with both the reinforcement and the edge blending into the base material. So like I said, even with the most perfect settings on your machine, we are still gonna see this problem. Inadequate filler material in most cases will cause our heat input to run amok. Without keeping things in check as we're moving, your weld can drop through to the other side much quicker than you think. Another thing that can cause this to happen as well is an excessively slow travel speed. Traveling at a slower speed is always gonna cause our overall heat input to pile up, and this can unfortunately cause things to pop through to the other side very quickly as well. However, I personally would argue, as long as you are using adequate filler material, and in some 
some cases when things are heating up a lot and getting pretty spicy, I would add just a little bit of extra filler material and we might see a lot of this heat negated, even though we may be traveling at a slower speed. Monitor that you are putting in enough filler material or reinforcement with each step. Look and see that your puddle is indeed filling up enough with proper reinforcement. And if you see this, this means you're giving it adequate filler material. If you are adding filler material, you're not really seeing much happening. And you are in fact seeing things fall hollow and flat. We know that unfortunately there is an inadequate amount of filler material being delivered to the weld area. And when this happens, your overall heat input piles up very quickly. Keep things in check. Watch this detail closely as you travel. If you are working with a 332 filler rod or 2.4 millimeter filler material, and you are noticing that things are consistently falling a little bit flat and ending up hollow. In my personal opinion, I would recommend switching to a thicker filler material. Like I said, 1 8 of an inch or 3.2 millimeter is my go-to. If you're seeing that problem, that's what I would recommend. Working with a little bit more filler material in my hand for each dab gives me a much more adequate amount of filler material should I need it in a hurry. And sometimes when I find myself in hot water, a couple double taps, a little bit of extra filler material usually gets me out of trouble in a hurry. So watch this episode up next now. This one elaborates much further on what we're talking about here. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. For Pacific Arc TIG Welding, my name is Dusty. Bill and Chill, we will talk soon. Peace.